I recently spoke, I don't know how recently, maybe a year ago, to Nick Bostrom about his book that came out also maybe about a year ago on Utopia. And a lot of this book is about how wonderful life would be with a an aligned superintelligence. Is this something that you spend any time thinking about or is it just so distant from your fears that so like 2007 2008 um it seemed to me that some people were giving up on the future because they couldn't imagine any kind of future worth fighting for and in those days i wrote something called the fun theory sequence or which is summarized in the 31 laws of fun uh which was about fun theory which deals with questions like how much fun is there in the universe? Will we ever run out of fun? Are we having fun yet? And could we be having more fun? Um, those days do seem distant. Uh, we're not going to solve the alignment problem in the near term. We're not going to get all those nice things in the near term. Uh, I think that at present, the thing to do is to, you know, not go extinct and not be wiped out by something that makes the universe a place without fun in it. But uh, long term, sure. If we, if we actually got our act together, we could be having more fun. We could be having lots of fun. But I do not think, it does not feel like this is the key crux of the argument. Even people who don't expect to become like immortal transhuman gods striding the stars um, in 20 years, if they can just stay alive, would prefer not to go extinct right away. It doesn't feel like the crux of the issue at this point. While we were off camera, you said that the doom of the world, I don't know what the phrase was, but the end of the world is- I probably didn't say doom, but go yeah. on. Well, maybe the end, of, the end of the world isn't all, doesn't have to be fun. I mean, there can be some doom and gloom involved in the conversation. It seems like you have, and maybe this is ridiculously obvious and I shouldn't have to say it, but, you are very seriously like, afraid of this and you really think it's going to happen that AI is going to be the end of humanity in the near future. It is a simple part of the real world to me, the same way as a family member's cancer diagnosis. There is nothing about it that is like often some special mythological realm. It, it, you know, yeah, death, death sentence, but people sometimes get those. To you, it seems like it's, it's as certain as a death sentence at this point. I mean, death sentences aren't themselves certain. Sometimes the governor calls. But it's highly probable, at least at this point, that it's going to be the end of... That is the default course. Other people get to decide if humanity follows that default course, by which I mean, like, you know, the rest of humanity. It is not my place to tell you that you ought to lie down and die. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm interested then in what courses of action obviously you come on on shows like mine but through the machine intelligence research institute what are you doing to try to prevent this who are you talking to what are the possible avenues what's the prognosis i mean it is unfortunately not something that one congressperson can solve or even one country um but yeah you you talk to your elected representatives um, and you ask them about inter and you, you talk to them about international treaties because it's not just one country's problem. You can be killed by an AI that somebody built on the other side of the world. Um, I, I'm not quite sure what to say here. Like you, humanity would need to lock down the GPUs and not let anyone build random stuff on them because among the things they could build would be a world slaughtering super intelligence. Um, so yeah, lock down the competing power, lock down what you're allowed to do with it, lock down the AI training ships. Um, and that takes an international treaty because if you just do it inside your own borders, well, some other country will kill you. All the countries have to stop doing it simultaneously. And that is not easy and that is not convenient, but it is easier than World War II and, it was, you know, it's easier than fighting World War II was. Um, probably about as, you know, it might not even be as hard as the... Persian Gulf War in 1991, if we, you know, did it sooner rather than later. Um, 
I'm not not quite not quite sure what else one is what is one one is supposed to say here. There there's like trying to uh, inform political leaders about the situation, and inform sure does get used a lot as a uh, synonym for like ah like try to serve our interest group over here. But we actually do think this is a situation where if you like if you as a factual prediction, think that the world works the, the way we think it works. You know, what you need to do from there is you know, kind of stra- kind of straightforward. There, there's not a lot of different things you can do here. I guess what, I, what I'm wondering is if you feel that you're making any progress or your allies are making any progress in averting this potential catastrophe. Yeah, things, you know... Probabilities go up and probabilities go down, and if you can foresee where they're going to go, you should have been there already. So yeah, sure. Like sometimes somebody has a, you know, like hopeful seeming uh, progress making conversation with a congressperson, and sometimes the uh, United States decides it's going to like completely ignore the uh, Nvidia shipping a bunch of AI chips to China that they weren't supposed to ship there. Uh, not that we're you know, China would have to be part of a deal like this too if one was cut, but it's still not a good sign that, you know, people are just shipping AI chips wherever. Um, so yeah, good news, bad news, on the whole, um, it's looking pretty terrible, but it is not in the end for me to decide that humanity will continue down its current course. Humanity gets to decide that, I don't. You mentioned earlier that OpenAI fired its a super alignment team and that these companies are in this sort of arms race to produce the greatest technology, but do they at all work with you or people like you who are, I mean, very critical of what they're doing or did they try to... The companies have been selected so as to exclude from their leadership people who understand alignment theory. The sole exception to this... um, might be Shane Legg at Google DeepMind, which was started far enough back that it wasn't the, the whole like giant arms race mess type of thing, and it wasn't clear what the technologies would look like. So Shane Legg, who was also a bit pessimistic, um, like could plausibly understand what was going on down there and still think like, yeah, we will try to collect all the AI research talent into one place and you know get out ahead of everyone else and burn that lead to do alignment. It was not a completely unreasonable thing to think at the time. Didn't work. But uh, Google DeepMind, which was the first of these companies, has not been filtered in quite the same way to exclude the people who understand the difficulty of alignment from their command structure.